So last night I spoke at Belmont Town Meeting, and this is a reprise of the same talk, and I'm going to add some audio visuals to the talk. The talk is about transportation. Here's the bad news first. Belmont is not an island. Most of the traffic in Belmont is cut through traffic. We can't block it. We can't shut it out. And by every estimation, it's only going to get worse. We have a, a sense that a lot of that traffic comes from due, is due to the congestion at Edelweiss, people jumping off of Route 2 to cut through Belmont. Two realities. First of all, what the data says is the traffic is everywhere to everywhere. There's a certain number of people going from Concord to Boston, but there's also an awful lot of people going, let's say, from Medford to Waltham. So there's no, it's not like there's one problem out there. But to the extent there's one problem that people focus on, it is Alewife. And the, the truth is there's really no good solution at Alewife. We have looked at it. The uh, Over the years, we've studied, and this is towards maybe about eight, nine years ago, studies were completed up on the bus routes into Alewife, asking the question, could we run more buses into Alewife? And the answer was basically the cost-effective routes are already in place. The question was asked, can we expand the garage and put more cars in there? And the answer is, you could, yes, you could expand the garage, but you could never get the cars in and out. The congestion on the ramps is already huge. We looked at the intersection there, and we did come up with a streamlining. We did look at every possible approach there, including going back to the old rotary approach, and we did make some modest improvements. But the um, those those don't really change the dynamics that much in the big picture because the congestion is so huge on Alewife Brook Parkway and Fresh Bond Parkway between Alewife and uh, the Charles River. That the, there are, the road segments there are among the most congested in the state, among the top, toast, top, top 10 most congested, the most of the rest of the most congested segments are on the Southeast Expressway. So this is a really a statewide known problem, and there really is no good solution to it. So that's kind of the bad news. Uh, but I do want to say that, and this is important for people to appreciate, Belmont is not alone in this problem. Every neighborhood, people have the same problem in Watertown, people have the same problem in Brighton and Fenway. Back Bay, every place I represent, people are concerned about cut through traffic. Of course, they're concerned about other people cutting through their neighborhoods, but the result is it's, it's the same. The same, is, same problem is everywhere. The good news is this. Uh, the transportation establishment in Massachusetts has kind of gotten over the long hangover of the humiliation of the big dig. I mean, people are really starting to ask questions about how we can have a better transportation system. And uh, the MBTA in particular is doing some great work. Um, and, and the budget is there to, do, to back up that great work. You know, there was a lot, there was a financial hangover from the big dig as well, but that is somewhat dissipated. So here's some of the big things that are happening. You know, um, I'm, I'm passionate about the concept of regional rail. We have rail service coming through Belmont. Uh, it's infrequent. It's commuter oriented. Um, and they are all through trains going on out to Fitchburg. I, when I located in Belmont 25 years ago, I, we didn't look at any houses that were not within walking distance of the train because I assumed I was going to want to take the train downtown. But I did that for about three weeks, and I gave up on it because I learned that, hey, look, if you miss the 5.30, you're dead till 7.30. If you miss the 7.30, you're really in trouble. And it's just too much aggravation. So for, for all of my commuting downtown, I've taken other public transportation routes, buses, walk to Alewife, uh, or jog, or bike. Um, and... Um, so the, the, the railroad is not a viable commuting route because it's so infrequent. And there's really only a couple hundred people who use it in Belmont, two to 300 on a daily basis. But what we could do, so the, the exciting regional vision is to look at can we run more frequent service, perhaps shorter run service. There's no cost justification for running a train all the way out to Fitchburg every 15 minutes. But could you run it out to Waltham every 15 minutes and have it turn around and come back? Um, and that kind, of, so that kind of service might be really transformative in terms of the commuter options that people have in Belmont, and by the way, also in Watertown and in Brighton and Alston that I also represent on the Worcester line. So that's a very exciting vision. That is a contract out that, the, that MassDOT is working on right now to consider that. It, it's, it's been an idea that's gone in and out of uh, uh, favor, but now the Baker administration is moving forward on it in a more cautious way. There are a lot of problems, a lot of challenges that need to be overcome. It's not a quick fix. 
but it's something that we're really looking hard at. So the rail vision, the big, rail vision is a big thing. Um, now, if you look at the transportation in Belmont, there are um, really, I'm talking about public transportation, there are, let's say there's a few hundred people that take the train, and there's about a thousand or so people that take any of the other smaller bus lines, the 74 bus line to Belmont Center, the 75 uh, Belmont Center via, Camp, via, Huron, via Huron Avenue, the 78 up to Aramont, and the 554, 550 something that runs from Waverly Square into um, uh, downtown. So those buses all, the, that all together is a, you know, about a thousand people, a little more together than that. But we have 3,000 people a day who ride the Waverly bus into Harvard Square. So that bus is by far the most significant component of public transportation in Belmont, and I give it a lot of attention. And there are things in the offing that I think will make a difference. Uh, first of all, we, we're looking at the issue of transit signal priority. That's something that the uh, MBTA has piloted successfully now in other communities, and we are working on uh, the possibility of introducing it along tr the Trapello belmont corridor. So the idea is that when a bus comes to a red light, the bus can go through. Bus, the, the light will turn green for the bus. Uh, and even with an even larger potential impact, we're focusing on the whole intersection system between Star Market, where you know Waverly and Mount, uh, where, where Belmont Street and Mount Auburn Street separate. Uh, into the um, Mount Auburn Hospital and across that huge intersection of Fresh Pond Parkway and Mount Auburn Street, which is so wide um, and awkward. So we're looking at adding a bus lane uh, in front of the cemetery there where buses often take five or ten minutes to get through. We're, at, we're looking at queue jump signaling so that the buses can jump in, in front and get across the, the major intersection when they're ready. Uh, we're looking at uh, overall signal timing changes at that big intersection at Mount Auburn Street and Fresh Pond Parkway. And then ultimately, uh, we're looking at geometry changes in the intersection there. That, that angle is a very awkward one that results in long delays of people clearing the intersection after the light has turned yellow or red. And, um, and, that, and that contributes to overall slowdown at the intersection. So there's a, a group of things happening there that will make a difference on the Waverly Line. And um, the differences will be greater speed greater um, frequency and greater reliability. Uh, you'll have less of those bus bunching experiences that result from traffic congestion. Now, um, I want to touch also on another made of mode of uh, transportation, which is the bike path. The bike paths in every community are difficult to build. There are always abutters that have concerns, and we need to respect those concerns. But once we the bike path moves forward, Almost everybody, including almost all of the abutters, love the bike path. And so this is something we need to get done in Belmont. It's been going on the conversation since the mid-90s. And the town has done a good job recently in moving it to it's very close to closure. Um, and um, that's something we need to get to. Now, the way it's going to work is Belmont needs to pay for the design. But then I think we can fight successfully for state construction money. Um, I think there's a conversation we need to have about the design of the bike path. The design of the bike path that is on the table is very complicated and very expensive. It has four crossings. Uh, where instead of just stay, staying on one side of the uh, tracks and moving forward, it crosses on a grade crossing. There's a tunnel crossing, which we all want to create the tunnel crossing, but making it part of the bike path complicates the bike path. And then we have another bridge crossing and then another crossing in Waverly Square. So four crossings, $30 million project. MassDOT's going to scrutinize that. And what, what I'm trying to do right now is get MassDOT and the MBTA to, to talk to the bike path designers and to kind of work through the issues and uh, come together around a, a project that everybody can support and that we can come into the funding process with uh, basically strong support from MassDOT, and that's what we need. Uh, so I'm very committed to moving that thing forward. Um, and the last area I want to touch on is I really want to give a shout-out to, um, to the MBTA's uh, core engineering team right now. You've got a great, uh, great leader in um, Jeff Gonneville, who is the um, deputy general manager of the MBTA. And he, he and his team of engineers have been really asking the question, how can we, uh, in, as we do the, make the investments we need to make repairs uh, and replacements, ch get to a much better quality of service? And I think they've been able to answer that question in a very exciting way with the red line that promises that within five or six years, we're gonna be looking at a 50% increase in capacity on the red line. And that will make a difference for an awful lot of people and, if, and, and an increase in reliability and speed. And so I think the commute of a lot, a lot of people, you know, a few hundred thousand a day is gonna get better over the next five, six years. And uh, most recently, they've developed a, a, a plan for the green line 
a vision for the Green Line that will allow us to actually double the capacity of the Green Line. That, that couldn't be more exciting. Uh, and so, because there's so many people that uh, would like to be riding the Green Line and just have given up because of the density of, of, um, tri of, of, of crowding on that line. So these four areas, the um, uh, rail, the regional rail vision, the 73 bus, the bike path, and supporting the red line and the green line. These are core missions for me, and I think they'll in the long run make a, a great difference for the quality of life in Belmont. Thank you.